Hello, sci-fi and RPG gamers. Nerds. Star Wars Chewbacca Man and me are going to have a look at this future world creator. Uh, Big box of goodness, mm. right? It's from the guys at Game Start Edizioni. You will remember them because they did one of our favorite products on Kickstarter uh, a few years back called the uh, uh, Fantasy World Creator. Mm. This was that beautiful set. Do you remember it was all black and white and lovely kind of uh, drawn um, effects and it had all of the standees in there and loads of corridors and kind of caves and dungeons and things like that. We're all big fans and I know that Ben was a huge fan of this. Well, they are back and this time they're taking on sci-fi. And they sent us through this big art, big box to Your have box. a look at what they're what they're doing. So they are setting out to create the ultimate sci-fi kit for uh, role playing games, um, and I suppose your, your miniature games yeah. and things like that. Oh, there's as well. no reason why this couldn't be used for a ton of miniature games. Mm -hmm. So uh, in this, just like the Fantasy World Creator, by the time they're finished this Kickstarter. We could probably expect tiles, tokens, standees, equipment, consoles, doors, interiors, mm. exteriors, status tokens, vehicles. Oh, it, it, yeah. It's all going to be in there. If you can think of it, they'll probably have it. Yeah, so what we did is we cracked it open. Mm. and We are having a look um, just through what is in the this box anyway. So yeah. in the box, we've got some lovely big sheets of card. You get prototype standees, so yep. this is not exactly what they're going to end up with, and they've given us a few dry white pens that mm. we can look at as well, scribble on. So this time, they have opted to go full colour, yeah. which I think you have to for sci-fi really. Yeah, you know, it's, um, the black and white for the fantasy RPG worked beautifully. And yeah. Those pencil illustrations and that sort of thing were just marvellous, but I think anybody who wants to run around a corridor in some futuristic alien planet or uh, building or whatever it happens to be, you really want the colour pops, you want the, yeah. the bright neons, that sort of thing. So we're expecting them to um, have a load of different kinds of uh, interiors and mm. environments like spaceships, alien world, post-apocalyptic, uh, it's all going to be in there. But I want to first have a quick look at the actual um, cards themselves yeah. to try and get a feel for the for the quality. So they say it's in a two mil laminated, um, uh, laminated stock. both side yeah. cardstock. And you know what? I can whip out <laughs> me, <laughs> me trusty calipers and uh, actually check just that. So let's, let's have a look and see what, uh, what we've got here. And there you go. So with the lamination on that there, it's a uh, 2.14. <laughs> Any excuse to, Any excuse to whip out my calipers. Shocking. Uh, the cardstock is lovely, actually. Yeah. It's um, it's very, very solid. Yeah, th this and is, everything is just yeah. kind of falling out. So there's uh, there's no possibility. The two things that I always check when it comes to, to cardstock is, A, are the tiles and bits and pieces likely to rip hmm. uh, as you're taking it out? No, definitely not. Look. Ta-da! It's done. Um, and B... Has the printing offset? Mm. Um, Normally, the worst offenders are tokens like that. our tokens. So yeah. we are seeing a little bit of offset yeah. um, on on these in the prototype. So um, Game Start uh, Edizioni, be careful of these because um, that offset is the, the is one of the things you want to watch. Now they're still on the token, yeah. but. If that got any worse, they could actually start to to come off the token itself. So, um, big one, and, and for any of you backers, make sure you make a point of that because any company creating this kind of stuff, that is a big bugbear of mine, yeah. and it's something that they should be paying very, very close attention to in their quality control. So, what different kinds of things do we have? So, we have these, the which are- Small six inch tiles. Small six inch mm. tiles. Then we get what these larger eight inch tiles are there? I so, think those are the eight, yeah. Yeah, so you get larger eight inch tiles. Now we'll notice that these don't have any of the kind of like jigsaw no. kind of components no, to I, them. So there's let me a couple just, of different types of, of tile they've set up. Now um, every tile is also double sided. Yeah. So there we have an apocalypse. Oh, that's a roof. Mm. Ah, I and see where they're going with this. Other yes. Other side is interior. 
So what you could do is floors. Yes. Right. So let me let me just pop the rest of these out just so we can have a flick through mm -hmm. them. Oh boy. So we get that. I'll leave the tokens just to one side for the moment. Yeah. There are some lovely tokens, mind you. I want to get down to these because these are the ones that start to have the the actual jigsaw connector pieces mm. uh, on them. Okay, so on this side, this looks like that alien world kind of skin. Yeah. And then on this side, that's definitely post-apocalyptic. Yep. Okay, so let's pick a few of these out to have a look at and see how they go together. So we've got sci-fi and does it... Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, this is something that they very specifically did. Wiggle room. Wiggle room. They made it um, so that there was a, a gap so that they didn't fit too tight. And that was to A, protect these from becoming torn and yeah. bent. And B, also to make it that you could, if you had set up an environment. Yeah, like a nine by nine or. Yeah, so say you'd set up some kind of like a big environment that you could pull out a middle piece and then swap it over yeah. to something should you have to. Um, I like that idea, and anything that protects the cardstock, I think, is is a good a good idea. Now these other bits, then, the the first cards that we took out are designed to give you floors. So what you can do is you can actually build up the floors on a, uh, on a particular. Yeah. Um, environment so your players could play in here and then say well actually we're going to go down a floor mm -hmm. and then they go down a floor and then they go down into a basement and if you don't want to be lifting tiles on and off mm -hmm. the floors have these little doohickeys yes and so you can essentially set up on a on a board this size on a, a standard sort of gaming table you can set up four floors yeah. And number them so you go this is your ground floor then have your stairwell that's your first floor that's your second floor that's your third so you go bump 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 here's your floors so that you could actually end up with people on different floors without having to worry about having different boards nice in different places nice They've in terms of the the print quality mm. uh, the print quality uh, the print quality is pretty good i would like to see if they could improve the print quality or the resolution possibly even a little bit more by the end of the campaign. Um, I'm not sure how much more they can um, uh, they can get out of that, but um, I don't know. I look at it and I, I think to myself, I wonder, can you eke out just a little bit more resolution to get mm. just a little bit more pop? I know they said for some of the darker tiles that the brightness will be changed anyway up yeah. based on these prototypes. So there are certain things that are coming in the Kickstarter um, that they've already said this will not be the same at the finish and then there yeah. are also a few things where they want the Kickstarter backers to join in and um, essentially vote on what they want so mm -hmm. things like this symbol for the floors yeah they have a choice of four that's their preferred one that's the one that they think looks mm -hmm. the best but they have a nice hexagon with a set of stairs sort of in the background on it yeah and so there's that there's um, the monsters where are we there's some yeah, more monsters. So let's have a look at the, the critters that yeah. are in, the, in so, the thing. So they're saying the back of them, which has the same sort of picture as the front, mm -hmm. they've got several different ideas for how to reflect which is the front, which is the black. The, the back. back. Whether yeah. they desaturate it, whether they change the background color. So this, all of this. So, on this version, it looks slightly desaturated compared to the front. I can mm -hmm. pull one out actually and show you. Can I just say the monsters are beautifully printed, actually? There is zero slippage um, of the print on this. Um, they are beautifully printed and there's no offset visible to me anyway. Um, so if we have a look at that one. Okay, um, so that's your front. And then your back is just very slightly uh, desaturated. Um, obviously, they have some spots for some really big griblies mm. that, that could be on the way. But check this bad boy out. Look at it. Just look at that. That's a face full of... Nom, 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 nom. That is... That is the, uh, if you're looking for griblies, monsters and heroes and stuff, yeah, it has you covered. What else have we got We've in there? We've got uh, corridor tiles. So mm -hmm. your sci-fi or... Oh, the 
chances. There's an industrial. Spaceship kind of yep. tiles, yeah. Uh, and then there's also the same sort of thing for, I think, must be there, yeah. That's your alien, like alien world. world. And then on the other side of the alien world should be your post-apocalyptic. Post-apocalyptic, yep. And then you've got some more yep. uh, alien world large tiles. Yep. And post-apocalypse on the other side. There's just a ton there is. of stuff on this. So. And scale-wise, they've kept the sizing of this the same as the fantasy world. And if yeah. you already have the fantasy world, you can still mix and match bits. Mm -hmm. So there are some tiles. I mean, that could easily be a marble floor. So that will be compatible with this. Um, That's a nice touch, isn't it? Yeah. Or even things like, I mean... I don't know what that is supposed to be, but that having that some sort of tile thing well, in the middle of the room. If you had yes, if you wanted to go for something that was a little bit more of the grim dark, yeah. that's your option right there. And then you can build up your yeah, your corridors, corridors and around the outside of that. So Yeah, so yeah. it's a, it's an incredibly modular system across the board, whether you've just whether you're just picking up the sci-fi one or if you've already got the fantasy one. Yeah. Um, you can really go whole hog. I tell you what. Yes. Yeah. Do you fancy building a layout? Shall we have a crack at building a layout yeah. and see what it looks like? Let's do this thing. Okay. So we have a layout. Have a layout. <laughs> Just have to populate it now. Yes, so if we were RPG in this, Jerry. Yes. We'd be, I would say, we'd like start maybe even here yeah. or here. And, um, you know, you would have your, oh. So these are color coded. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what you pick up from the giant box of stuff. Uh huh. Depending on your group. Blue is for your NPCs. Mm -hmm. or sorry, blue is for your player characters. Okay. Green is for your NPCs, and then black and red are your monsters. So that easily could be a that could be a player character. Nice. In a different scenario. It's up to you. Nice. You're only limited by your imagination, eh? Yeah. As they say in France. Also, we got a space mouse in there. So, so what? Would like that. So what it allowed us to very quickly do was to lay out. Um, our explorers are exploring their way through um, alien planet, okay? And then we have discovered, uh, like, a science lab. There's a science lab to discover. That science lab has some corridors, has some cool rooms, mm. and it even has um, a tower over here, which would be denoted by, you know, you get into there, which looks like a bar or a canteen to me, yep. with office space above it. And then finally, some... Um, Bunks. Some bunks, Dust dormitory. a dormitory yeah. above that. And that's that's one of the ones where you can just go, that's level three, mm -hmm. set it to one side. That's level two, set it to one side, and then that's level one. Yeah. So people, you don't even have to have them stacked up. You could end up with one of our player characters who we got here, some sort of terrible halfling technomancer. Yeah. He could be having a kip on level three, while this delightful chap here, who obviously has all the information, could be kicking it in the offices yeah. with the security. All of this stuff is dry dry wipe, so you know you can put whatever you want on it and then just wipe it off. And of course, you know, it being stuff I would have to have some graffiti. Warzan was ear. Yeah. And then we'll wipe it all yeah. off, of course. So it's um so, very nice. Yeah. And for the likes of these, I mean there you can clearly see there is some form of door. Yes. Here, not so much. But mm -hmm. at that point you go, we'll have a closed door there. 
Ah. And then if they come along and open it, you could just either wipe that off and change it to green for an open door. Yeah. Or, you know, the door is up to you where they enter, where they exit from. Or if you want to set, set of stairs in. Or... Could you even just draw an yeah. open door? Ha ha. Using your artistic skills, you can yeah. indeed. Yeah. And there we go. Love it. Um, now's a good time to have a look at some of the tokens. Yep. Right. So as I have said, and this is uh, the, the feedback to uh, GameStart the Dizioni, the offset on these is pretty bad, guys. So whenever you come to go into full production of this, please, please beware of that because um, the, the offset is atrocious on these ones. Okay. However, the concept of the tokens is excellent because as well as of uh, all these myriad of tokens, you also have these little tokens, Jerry, which yep. um, allow you to do any kind of a status yep. and even like mark off wounds. So if you had a, a monster and you could give them that token and then just mark off the wounds yep. as you were killing them down. Energy so. shields, anything like that. Anything you can come up with or need for your particular game. Yeah. Because not every game has a silenced yeah so uh, yeah stunned unconscious off target overburdened we all know that one <laughs> off kilter pinned prone paralyzed panicked just there's so much choice yeah. in this you know it's um yeah it deafened is in there as well that's Isn't always that? handy yeah, yeah so can't hear you coming they're, they're all there the myriad of monsters do you want to see the monsters we we pulled the monsters out Look at the monsters! Um, of course, any RPG we would have, we would have to meet some kind of mechanical dragon. Roar! Or this kind of face-hugging, tyranny, slicing-sucking thing of doom. Want one of them, Jerry? Yep. <laughs> so, My mechanical dragon would be a friendly NPC that you can buy potions from. Now, did you know Yes. that if you're the kind of DM that likes to get all of your planning done in advice uh, in advance. Right. These guys even have something put together to keep you occupied at work. Ooh. They have an app. There's an app for that. I the, hear much about these apps these days. They're, they're very much the coming thing. There is a web app for this. Let's go and have a look at it. So this is the app. <laughs> yeah. So the way this works, Jerry, is you can actually sit while you're at work, mm. wasting your employer's time. Good to know. Um, uh, while planning out um, uh, a dungeon, so or, or like a sci-fi yeah. environment. So you can pick from the, the element types. You've got tiles, building tiles. So that's your kind of raised uh, yep. additional floors. Barricades, the different kind of like walls and doors and yep. force fields. Cars and characters. Mm. So if we went to tiles, you can then, beneath that, choose your your sub-theme, mm -hmm. okay? So you'll recognize these. Yes. These are the ones that we were using to build up the, the alien part of the board, okay? So all you need to do then is just grab them and drag them on. So you can drag them Snapper. like that, and then you've got the opportunity to rotate them, okay? Mm -hmm. Where you rotate it to there, and then you can kind of uh, join them all up. So I'm going to join up a few of these. So I'm going to join that one into there. And I'm going to put one more in. They just snap fit? Yep. So I'm going to take him and I'm going to rotate him until I'm happy he's going to fit. And I believe it just fits like that. Clever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you can click on any item, I'm pretty sure, and then write a piece of text. Um, or, or draw text and write the text onto the various items. So if we put, uh, let's for example, a swamp of fire. Yeah, a swamp of fire. That's always a good one. So yeah. if we select that, um, we can then change the color of it and then grab it and move it up to there. Swamp of fire. Um, there's also a free drawing option as well, where you can draw bits and pieces, Ch which is kind of cool. Yep. Clever art skills. Um, I will delete that because I don't have clever <laughs> art skills. Um, so yeah, and then you have your uh, Space Citadel Starship ones. Now you can look for the four-inch tiles, which are all the corridors. Yep. So do you remember we did a kind of like a corridor mm -hmm. shooting off? Oh, 
that's how you would do that here. And then you would just um, rotate that. Do that, and then you can build it out. And there's uh, there's a lot of uh, different options that you have. You have mm -hmm. layers where you can go a layer up or a layer down. So, so you can do you your can levels, yeah. Building your multi-level uh, kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's a really good app. Now, um, the, the app is still in its early stages. During the Kickstarter, they intend to take it to um, a whole other level where you can save and then share. Mm. But but really, everything is uh, everything is basically there. So if you want to like drag in your 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 characters, you know, yep. you have the option uh, to do that. Um, you can add custom data to a character. So um, this is the information. Information. Okay. So later on, whenever you click on that character, you can click the custom data and, and it will say whatever uh, you've put so in there. Yeah, it'll say whatever you whatever you've done there. So for a planning thing, yeah, um, or, or even uh, as a tool that you could, because it's a web app, it'll run on your tablet, it'll run on your laptop. Mm. Um, it's the kind of thing that you know if you're running an RPG, all your notes and stuff, yeah, could potentially could be, be on there. It. So if you you have your laptop behind your DM screen or whatever, and you just double click it in and find in the bits and pieces you need, handy. Especially if people are building and sharing, mm -hmm. it means you can then just you know you don't even have to plan in advance. You can yeah. rely on other more productive members of society to plan in advance for you, and then just borrow their stuff. Exactly. I like that. Yeah, I like the idea of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So uh, the last couple of bits of information that are, are worth knowing. Mm. Is um, if you manage to jump in on this uh, Kickstarter in the first couple of days, they do have a limited edition mini that they're giving mm. away. Okay, um, which to be fair, yeah, it's nice. It's a lovely mini, but there's a million cardboard standees in yeah. this. So yeah, it's, the mini, it's, the it's, mini's it's, nice, but yeah. I'm loving all the standees myself. It's there for the people who like little little things, and it's there just the first two days. If you can get in and get it, if you get in days, quick, you've got yeah, it. You know, you know, it's, it's, um, the the last thing is is a piece of breaking news that just mm. happened in the last uh, the last day or two, and that is John Gilmore, um, a designer known for Dead of Winter, Dinosaur Island, and Wasteland. Um, he has um, loved this, mm. and he is now um, working on a set of rules to accompany this. Mm. So what he's doing, I had it written down here. So it, it, one of he's going to take one of his very first successes. I think it was called Pocket, Pocket Dungeon. Dungeon yeah. yeah, and he's going to evolve it uh, to work with their World Creator uh, kind yeah. of series that, that that they've put together. So. Um, yeah, it'll be part of the it'll be part of yeah. the campaign. Like John Gilmore's see, a, that's yeah. a good name to, to have attached to it, you know. So Pocket Dungeon's about ten years old. Um and if people haven't seen it, you really should go and check it out. It's a little print and play essentially it's running a dungeon using post it notes and one sheet of paper. Yeah. And, and that's it. You don't need dice or anything else. So the fact that he's gonna go back to that and it's still well used a decade on mm -hmm. and go here it is updated and, and reimagined for science fiction and futuristic should be yeah. should be really good because it's such a, a neat easy little system to use mm -hmm. so this obviously is is very flexible and could be used for any rpg or miniatures game that you can really horseshoe into it yeah across post-apocalyptic into sci-fi um but having something like that in the box going i don't have anything yet but here's a little little mini game that should be easy to pick up and run with yeah uh, it should be a lot of fun so that's our look at future world creator mm. to recap um the areas that i would like to see improve um uh, is if the creators pay very close attention to these printer offset uh, issues we've seen them in the prototype yeah we know it's a prototype but you got to make sure that is not in the mm. final product and then secondly um uh, have a look at the, the the resolution of the printing to see if it can be sharpened, um, sharpened yeah. uh, uh, a little bit because I think I think there is I think there's some scope for it to be sharpened um, other than that I, I really like the environments uh, I like the system it's nice it's flexible it's fast yeah you know if uh, we, we saw what they did with the fantasy one and it yeah. was fantastic one thing Lance brought up was maybe actually remove the English off the status tokens yes because there's a ton of them they can mean whatever you want them to mean mm -hmm. and having them in english obviously restricts 
well, it doesn't restrict, but it, 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 somewhat it, restricts it, somewhat foreign language markets. Foreign language. Yeah. yeah. Whereas if they just take those off and keep the little symbols, because the symbols are in most cases very easy to spot what they mean. Yeah. But there's one that says fascinated and it's just like a little face with two little hearts for eyes. What I would be inclined like that, to so. do, if at all possible, yeah, if you, if you remove the English words off the tokens and maybe introduce more colours into the tokens so mm. as to make it easier to tell one um, from another yeah. possibly. It's an option. Like It's not going to get you over... No. Well, the combination of the symbol and the colour, colour blindness, they obviously can still see the symbol. Um, but at a glance... For, for those of us that, that obviously aren't colorblind, it would be a nice way to yeah. be able to differentiate one token from another uh, a little more quickly. Um, but yeah, the, in, in terms of the setup, yeah, I like where they're going with this, mm. and I'll be watching the Kickstarter closely. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe, and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.